the one major issue which is being discussed, in fact, all over the world, and particularly in South Asia and in India, is about Citizenship Amendment Act. And all of us need to have an understanding about, you know, why this bill has been introduced in the parliament. Citizenship Amendment Bill, and later it became an act. It is for the first time in the history of this country, a parliament unfortunately passed the bill which is against the constitutional spirit and the constitutional ethics and the constitutional morality of this country. The constitution of this country in the preamble of the Indian constitution talks about we the people of India. And we the people of India, the preamble of the constitution talks about you know, secularism and socialism of this country. And this bill which has been passed by the Indian parliament is against the entire canons, entire spirit of the Indian constitution. Indian constitution talks about equality. Indian constitution according to article 14 of the Indian constitution talks about all people are equal in India. But this particular bill is making majority of the people unequal. And when we are talking about this bill, you know, it is important for us to talk about. In fact, you know, I would not call this bill as citizenship amendment bill. I will call it the bill as polarization of citizenship amendment bill. Polarization of citizenship amendment bill. This bill is polarizing people on the basis of religion. This bill is dividing the people on the basis of religion. And then it's also important for us, you know, when you're talking about this bill, it is the exclusion of Muslims of this country. Muslims of this country are over 250 million people. They have been part of the mainstream social and economic political process of this country for years and years. And they want to bring about this bill. And they are not only talking about the you know, Citizenship Amendment Act, they are talking about the NRC, National Registration of Citizens. And now we will talk about you know, what is this National Registration of Citizens. Now you know, they are also talking about you know, another kind of a bill, National People's Register. And the government is confusing the people of this country every day. And people of this country are no longer getting confused on these things. So particularly when you are talking about no citizenship amendment bill, this I would call it polarizing citizenship amendment bill. As I have said, you know, it's excluding Muslims of this country. It's targeting Muslims of this country. It's not only targeting the Muslims of this country, it's also targeting the most marginalized sections of this country, such as the Dalits and the Adivasis and other minorities such as you know, Christians, Sikhs and Parsis and other small religious groups of India. When I'm saying you know, targeting the Muslims and the Dalits, NRC is talking about national, uh, national register of citizens, talking about that we need to produce evidence that we are citizens of this country. What, is a, what an amazing thing in India. What's a surprising thing in India that we have to prove our nationality now. We have to prove our citizenship now by showing, you know, a document to say, who are you? Who are you born? Where are you born? Do you have evidence, you know, where you are born? And these kind of, 40% of the people in this country live below the poverty line. Forget about food. They are not even having drinking water in India. About 10% of the people in this country are nomadic tribes. They don't know where they live. They don't know where they eat. They don't know where they stay. Stay. They, we, we don't know where they sleep tonight. Where are they going to be getting these kind of documents to prove evidence of where they are born? 
which region they are born, which place they are born. In this country there have been several floods and cyclones and disasters. And most of the time it's the poor people who move away whenever there is any kind of a cyclone or, or a drought or any other kind of a disaster. Do they carry their documents with them? And now you know, as part of the NRC, what are they saying? Give us this document. Tell us you know, where you are born. Where are they going to be getting these kind of documents? Do people preserve one of those kind of documents? And what is the government of India going to be doing with these documents? Every family will have to give four or five documents. Spending, you know, money. Poor people will have to run around, you know, all over to get, you know, these documents. In the first place, they are not going to be getting those documents. And why are they going to be, this, this amounts to, you know, really harassing the poorest of the poor in this country. The poorest of the poor in this country are struggling for existence. The poorest of the poor in this country are struggling for life. The poorest of the poor in this country are struggling for water. The poorest of the poor are struggling for two square meals a day. But the government of India now says, you know, you get us, you know, documentary evidence about, you know, your existence. That is why we are saying, you know, this is against, you know, the spirit of the constitution. It is unconstitutional to ask people who have been living for generations and generations here. Why does the government want this data? What are they going to be doing with the data? Why, did they, why do they want a religious data? Why do they want to know whether you are a Muslim or a Parsi or a Christian? For planning of this country, we don't need that data. For planning of this country, what we need to have? Data about how many people are middle class? How many people are upper middle class? How many people are below the poverty line? How many people have housing? How many people have jobs? How many people, the children are going to schools? What kind of schools they are going? Are they going at all? Are they literate? Are they illiterate? What kind of an existence of life they have? What is the nature of income they have? This is the kind of a data which is required for planning. In the name of planning, you know, they want to collect you know, all kinds of irrelevant data about religion. What are they going to be doing with this religious data? Which religion I belong to, does it matter as long as you know, we are citizens of this country? In a secular nation, we don't need to have that kind of data about to know what kind of a religion we belong to. Yes, you need economic data. You need to you know economic conditions of the people to know the way they are living. In the name of defining a citizenship, who has to define a citizenship? For generations you know we have been living here. For generations you know we have been existing here. And you want the data. And now you know, we know what has happened in Assam. Crores and crores of rupees have been spent. According to one estimate, 25,000 crores were sent in Assam in terms of you know, trying to collect data relating to NRC. And what are they doing with that information now? You know, 19 lakh people do not have any kind of a document to prove. And now you know, we know out of the 19 lakh people, only 5 lakh are Muslims and there you know. 14 lakh people are all Hindus, Adivasis, Dalits, nomadic tribes. 15 lakh people. In one state, only there are 19 lakh people you know, who could not give. Small, small state, Assam is only having a population of little over 3 crore population. There, you know, what are they going to be doing with that? Are we going to be having more and more detention centers? Are we going to be sending him to detention center. These questions are very, very important. In that kind of a context, I think, you know, when you are talking about, you know, this citizenship amendment bill, for the first time in India, an Indian democracy of over 70 years, there's a massive people's movement. It is not a Hindu-Muslim issue. It's a people's issue. Who are the people are fighting? Young people. Youth of this country are fighting. What are the youth of this country are saying? 
Parliament is not supreme. People are supreme. And that is what the constitutional spirit of this country. That is what the constitutional morality of this country says. People are supreme. And that is why this massive protest is going on. And who are the people who are protesting? The leading institutions of this country. Indian Institute of Technology. Indian Institute of Management. Indian Statistical Institute. Jawaharlal Nehru University. Jadavpur University. Usmania University. All mainstream universities all over the country which are importing quality education, outstanding education are protesting. Why are these youth protesting? Because they understand what India is all about. They understand the purpose of the government in trying to collect this data. They want to make this nation a Hindu nation. They want to make this nation a Savarkar Republic. The youth of this country, we do not believe in Savarkar Republic. We do not believe in India being divided on the basis of religion. That is why, you know, these young people all over the country are, 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 are fighting. In the first place, I have said, legislators, members of parliament in this country should not have passed a bill which is against, you know, the spirit of the Indian constitution which blatantly violates the constitution. All over the world, there are editorial opinion, comments on this. What did the United Nations say? An international body said this bill is blatantly discriminatory. It said openly it is discriminating this bill on the basis of religion. The mainstream media all over the world, whether it's New York Times, Washington Post, Times London, Wall Street Journal, Many of the mainstream newspapers, not only in India, all over the world, have been very critical of this bill. They said this bill polarizes India. This bill is going to be dividing people of India on the basis of religion. And now, now when the government is talking about, you know, well, Citizens Amendment Act has come. We are going to now you know, bring about you know, National People Register. Then, you know, they said, you know, we'll bring about an NRC. People of this country have understood the agenda of this nation, agenda of this RSS, BJP politics of this country. They know that they want, their agenda is not no longer a hidden agenda. It's an open agenda to make this nation a Hindu nation and a Hindu Rashtra. That is why this government does not have any kind of a credibility. This government, BJP government does not have any kind of a trust among the people. After all, they got only 40% of the mandate. 40% of the people have voted for this government. 60% of the people are against the government. But unfortunately, because they have majority, they could form a government. But 60% of the people are against, you know, BJP philosophy, BJP political uh, policies. So that's where I think the only slogan now in this country should be save India, save democracy, save constitution of this country. And I think it's important for me to analyze a little more about Citizen Amendment Act. This massive movement which has been led by, for the first time in India, we find students, youth, who are in the age group of 18 to 20 to 25, are in the forefront. <laughs> And they are leading the movement. And they are setting a national agenda today. They are setting an agenda for this country saying that we will not allow any political party to dilute secularism, plurality, diversity, secular values of this country. Number two, spontaneity. Look at the movement which has taken place after the bill has been passed in parliament. It is spontaneous. Youth are coming. People are coming. Civil society is coming, non-governmental organization coming, activists are coming, voluntary organizations are coming, and the movement has now swept the whole. Look at the scale of the movement. Scale of the movement is all over the all over the country. And what is the message of this movement which is taking place in India? Committed to values enshrined in the constitution. What are the values? 
equality, equity, secularism, all religions are equal. Every citizen of this country is equal before the law. Before the law. And we have also seen in a big way how social media like this are being used, spread values, values of constitutional values. And I'm happy that this movement is taking place in a such big manner. Now, you know, the government wants to stifle the movement. You have seen what happened in Uttar Pradesh. 25 people have been killed who were, went about you know, protesting. And now you know, cases have been filed against you know, these youth who are responsible for the violence which has taken place there. What are the police doing? Our police not responsible for the violence which has taken place in UP and many other places. What happened in JNU yesterday? One of the premier and leading institutions of India. How did this 100 RSS hooligans get into the university campus, attacked the students, attacked the, the faculty. What was the police doing? What was the government doing there? That attack in JNU, which has taken place in the last two days, is on the basis of connivance, understanding with the government, understanding with the police there. What is that they want to do? They want to send a message to the country. If we are not going to fall in line, if we are going to be criticizing the government and government policies, we will come and attack you. That is the message they are sending. But look at what happened after the JNU incident. All over the country, in all colleges and universities, young people are protesting, saying that you cannot stifle democracy. You cannot stifle public institution. The public institutions stand for constitution. The public institutions stand for, stand for democracy. That is the message which they have sent all over the country. So the government has got a clear agenda. Their agenda is anyone who is criticizing the government and the government policies, everyone who is criticizing the, you know, today, CAA, NPR, NRC is anti-national. That is the kind of a narrative which the government of India is developing. Anyone who knows criticizing a government policy, you're an urban nuxion. That's what they're saying in JNU. These left students are having nuxial leanings, nuxial ideology. It is they who are responsible for spreading this kind of a violence. Violence. No one is going to be believing, you know, that kind of a narrative in the country. They are students who are organized. They are sensitive students who are concerned about what is happening in India. That is why, you know, this protest movement is going on all over the country. So we must continue to protest. The only way. Civil society is the only answer for many of the burning issues of this country. Citizens Amendment Act, they brought about Yes, it may have been discussed cosmetically in Parliament. Was it discussed with the people of this country? Did we take the people of this country into confidence? When we went to go about by introducing a bill, look at what they have done in Kashmir. They imposed abolished you know, 370, special privileges which are there. The movement took place in a big way in Kashmir. Then they were brought about you know, triple talaq. And they are bringing about you know, demonetization. They thought no, there were no movements in this country. People of this country will continue to keep quiet. People of this country are questioning the government. People of this country are protesting against you know, draconian laws. People of this country are questioning bills which are against you know, the constitution of this country. That is where we will continue to fight. Our demand is Citizenship Amendment Act should not be there in the statute books of India. Citizenship Amendment Act should be abolished in India. No citizen of this country is going to be participating in National Register for Citizenship because they have got, this government have no credibility. People do not trust this government. 
People of this country are not going to be cooperating in providing any kind of a data, any kind of information when they come from any kind of a survey because they know how they're going to be misusing NRC data or NPR data. They don't need that data. Census data is enough. Census should give information about certain indicators of economics. Census should give data about indicators of economic life of the people of this country. That's enough for any kind of a policy making. That is why we are going to be opposing implementation of Citizenship Amendment Act. We are going to be uh, opposing tooth and nail. The NRC and NPR. And we are working within the framework of the Constitution. The Constitution has given us the right to question. The Constitution of this country has given us the right to protest. The Constitution of this country has given us the right to mobilize public opinion. And that is what all of us are doing in terms of shame, trying to shape and influence what is there in the Indian Constitution. And we are talking about constitutional values and democratic values. And with that, that kind of a spirit, we are protesting. With that kind of a spirit, we are mobilizing public opinion. In that kind of context, we are going to be having a major meeting of an organization which we have formed recently, Save India Committee. Save India Committee is a committee which is having students, youth, activists, journalists, professors, voluntary organizations, concerned citizens. All of us have come together and formed Save India Committee, because that is the only slogan today. Save India, save constitution, save democracy, save people of this country. We're going to have a major conference on January 19th, January 9th, 2020. On January 9th, 2020, at Sundaraya Vidyana Kendra, where about, you know, a couple of thousand people will assemble to discuss what's happening in India. And again, it will further give an opportunity to shape and influence public opinion in the direction of the Indian constitution, in the direction. Yeah, the protest movement which is going on in India. The movement is about protecting the constitution of this country. The movement is about protect, protecting the constitutional values of this country, the constitutional morality of this country, the constitutional ethics of this country and much more important is protecting secularism, secular values, plurality and diversity of India. And all the protest movement which are taking place in India is to protect only the constitutional values and secular values of India. I hope all of you also participate in this protest, this debate and discussion in this country. That is the important thing which is required in India. All of us should come together and save India, save democracy, save constitution, save secularism. Thank you very much.